The Gospel of Luke is the message of salvation. Today I'm going to be talking about Elizabeth, a woman in waiting. And the story of Elizabeth and Zechariah is found in Luke 1, 1 through 45. The Gospel of Luke is a message of salvation and wholeness through Jesus' ministry. Luke tracks the events in Jesus' life, including his life, life, death, and resurrection. The story begins not with Jesus, but with the promise of the birth of John the Baptist. Both were born by a special power of God, both heralded by the same angelic messenger, both named by the angel, and both called to fulfill a key role in the working out of God's purpose of deliverance for his people. John is the fulfillment of prophecy, and his ministry begins the work that Jesus will continue. Elizabeth and Zechariah were John's parents. Zechariah was a priest, and Elizabeth was a descendant of Aaron, a priest in Israel. They were religious servants of God. Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and this is in Luke 1, 7, but they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. The angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah. Gabriel also declares God's purpose to Mary, Jesus' mother. In Luke 1, 26 through 27, it states, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man, Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Well, this is about Mary and what happened with um, the birth of Jesus. God has a special role for John. Jesus has a saving role, and that is in Matthew 1, 27. John's mission, however, was to bring about religious revival. Zechariah was in disbelief, and he was doubtful about the promise to the point that he was silent and not able to speak. He was punished for his disbelief. Luke 1 20, and now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Do Let me ask you a question. Do you take God at his word? Do you take God at his word when he has revealed a promise to you? Elizabeth's reaction was like Hannah's. She was thankful. They were both rescued from the social stigma of barrenness. Elizabeth in her disgrace of her inability to bear children represents human helplessness, which is to be overcome by the power of God. Now, what can women learn from Elizabeth to empower us to live out our faith? Her despair gives way to praise. Luke 1, 23 through 25, and it reads, When his time of ser service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. 
in these days he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among people. Another point. God will overturn situations of human helplessness and despair. This is what he will do for us. Elizabeth, Elizabeth was a witness to what God can do. Let us not miss God in the midst of waiting. Isaiah 64, 3 through 5. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. Verse 5. You come to help of those who gladly do right, who remembers your ways, but when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? The last point, Elizabeth patiently waited on God. She did not put her wants and needs up ahead of what God wanted for her. We need to be patient in waiting for God. That's something that, that we all need to work on. What does scripture say about patience? In Romans 12, 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Romans 8, 25, but if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Galatians 6, 9, let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Psalm 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. We must be in prayer while we're waiting. Fervently pray every day while we're waiting. Think about what you can do, what else you can do while waiting on the promises of God. We can meditate on his word. We can fast. We can journal our thoughts. But most importantly, pray and listen to his voice. Lord, I thank you for this teaching. In Jesus' name, amen.